never have a great big spliff and then go out shopping for shirts in the sales. He just never knew um, what he was going to do. There she was, just a walking down the street, singing to a diddy diddy dum diddy doo. But in terms of actually managing an act, you can't manage somebody that headbutts you. He had a real self-destruct button. He'd be storming the gig and then he'd say something that he knew was going to fuck it up. If Cox was going down <laughs> in flames on stage, he was like, fucking hell, everybody get round and have a look at this, because if he decided he was going down, he was going down. And then he go, ah, ah, you ain't got any black friends, have you? I go, no, no, but then I ain't got any white friends, have you? <laughs> Sorry, you're asking me if Cognito was racist. Not for one second. No. He could be equally hateful towards everyone. That's my problem, like a drink, don't I? Like a drink. I got fucked up last night on vodka and Red Bull. I woke up doing press-ups in the gutter. I text him saying, if you're not good, you can go on first, do shorter and just get off. And you know, Cognito being the way he was, he weren't going to have that. The man who shocked audiences and he gave them one last shock, didn't he? He became a globally famous figure in comedy for about three minutes. I remember when I heard it happened, all I wanted to do was to be in a room with loads of other comics. I just wanted to be with comics because they were the only ones that would get how important this man was. I mean, thankfully, I didn't have to follow him because I don't think I would have ever been able to follow him. <laughs> I'm a professional. When you were on a bill with him and when you were chatting to him, you really felt like you'd made a good decision in life. Available now on video on demand.